I've been fascinated by nature since I was a little kid, which is great for my parents because I was never interested in the latest toys or expensive video games. But the cost of having a child like me is that I'd often come back absolutely covered in mud, carrying some weird collection of rocks or stones or dead things, which I'd then hide around the house for my parents to find. Sorry, Mum. I've just always felt so much comfort in being outside, and as I grew older, I became obsessed with a particular group of animals, invertebrates, otherwise known as bugs. Now, bugs are a polarizing topic. Some people hate them and are terrified of them, whereas I think they are fascinating, they are charismatic, and I personally think they are cute. I think more people would feel the same if only they would take the time to slow down and notice them. So today, I'm going to give you the power to see bugs from a new perspective. And this is something that is very important to me. I've spent much of my life trying to convince people to see bugs the way that I see them. So much so that I've made a career as a scientist and as an environmental educator doing just that. I now work in London on a project trying to connect people with nature. So I often spend my days talking to people about insects, taking them bug hunting, and ultimately trying to show them just how much fantastic nature we have in cities. And you might think, why is it important that people connect with nature? Well, we are undergoing a global loss of biodiversity at an alarming rate due to our overconsumption of resources, and the destruction of natural habitats. So many people I talk to have never held a beetle, and that really bugs me. <laughs> I think that maybe I can make some small change to this if I can just take enough people bug hunting. Not to beat around the bush, although that is exactly what I do. <laughs> Much of my work is with young inner city kids. And what I find most interesting is that when they're young, kids don't have this fear of insects. You can put a snail in their hand. And if you give them some reassuring guidance and you project enthusiasm, they absolutely love it. And I wonder how you would feel if I was to put a snail in your hand right now. I imagine that you may not be quite so obliging. And so if when kids are young, they don't have these fears, when do they develop them and why? If any of you are former children, when did you start becoming grossed out by bugs? Last year, I spent the summer ambushing families across London's parks and trying to convince them to come bug hunting with me. And I swear that this is a legitimate job. <laughs> there was one family with a young daughter who agreed to come, so I gave them some bug nets and we went for a walk. We were sweeping our nets through the long grass and we caught a grasshopper but it was special because it was a grasshopper with a mutation that has turned it bright pink. And this family were amazed that this beautiful pink creature existed in the center of London. Most people think of parks as places of grass for your picnics and to play football, but there's this whole other level if only you take the time to notice them. So we were off to a great start. This young girl had just caught her first ever grasshopper. And it was such a positive experience. I thought, yes, this is exactly what I'm trying to do. This is such a win. So we off to a good start. This young girl had just caught her first grasshopper. So I thought, let's extend the walk. I know a fantastic fallen tree that always has some good bugs under it. So we walk over, and this young girl and I slowly roll over this log. And underneath is a massive worm. And I'm like, whoa, look at that worm because that's the voice I make when I'm excited by bugs. <laughs> now, at this point, mum and dad are distracted. They're looking at their phones. But I asked the young girl, would you like to hold the worm? And she says, yes. So she picks up the worm. And as I'm telling her which end of the worm is the head, and it's the pointy end if you were interested, mum looks over, sees her daughter holding this worm, and screams, put that down. Now, understandably, this young girl screams, drops the worm, and then jumps back in shock. Now, with a reaction like that, that child is never going to want to hold a bug ever again. 
And that is because fear is a learned response. Children start off as this blank canvas, and they pick up these behaviors from their parents and from experiences. And moments like this are how our disconnect from nature starts and then propagates across generations. And you might think that the fear of bugs is, is logical because there are some species around the world that can be harmful to humans, but it's more complicated than that. Sharks are dangerous, but we often don't freak out when we see photos of them like we do when we see a picture of a spider. And that's because when it comes to bugs, the feeling of fear gets mixed up with the feeling of disgust. And it produces this feeling of revulsion, that panicky feeling that you need to get that thing far away from you right now. And I'm sure you've probably all experienced that. And this sort of response may have benefited our ancestors to stop them from eating foods that would make them ill, because insects can be a sign of decay or unsafe hygiene. But we're living in very different times now, and I would argue that this behavioral relic from our evolutionary past does not serve us anymore, especially in the UK. And the second part of this fear, which is where I come in, is that we often don't have any positive experiences with bugs. Our encounters with them are often in our homes, where it feels like an invasion or an infestation. As a society, we are obsessed with keeping things clean, with sanitizing things, wiping them down, and that's something that's probably been exacerbated by COVID. And as a result, we're so detached from anything that could be considered unclean, such as insects. And the implication of this is that we just don't care about bugs. We're always stocking up on bug spray or ant killer for our lawns, and that's a huge problem. There is a global decline in insects, with estimates that 40% of species could go extinct in the next few decades. And that's something to be really worried about. Insects are essential to the functioning of our society. To give one example, around 35% of the food that the planet depends on requires some sort of animal pollinator, such as bees, to produce the food that we eat. Without them, we wouldn't have things like tomatoes, or blueberries, or how about them apples? <laughs> and of course, a cherry on top. There are so many more examples of why insects are important. I just picked the low-hanging fruit. <laughs> they also help to recycle nutrients. They break down all the dead plants and animals, and they themselves are food for so many other creatures on our planet. Without them, we would not exist. But above all, insects are fascinating. They come in so many different shapes and colors and sizes. In the UK alone, we have around 24,000 different types of insect. But the trouble is, we never slow down and take the time to notice them. That was until a global pandemic hit, and many of us were confined to our homes with our only relief from our tiny indoor spaces when we could go out for our daily trip. Now, I wonder if you had a route around your neighborhood that you would walk or wheel or cycle during lockdown. I did. And I walked my local routes almost daily for the best part of a year, and it was a really interesting experience. For the first time ever, I really noticed the changing of the seasons. The buzz of bees at the first sight of spring and the changing color of the leaves in the autumn. And I found that I took more time to pause and notice the weeds growing up through the pavement and the aphids and the caterpillars feeding on their leaves. But it's only when you slow down and you take notice of the little things that you really see them. And I found that it gave me so, gave me so much comfort in times of stress and anxiety. So I hope that you will continue to go for your local walks. You notice the changing of the seasons. But I'm asking you to take time to slow down pause, and look out for the little things. In the summer, go find a wildflower meadow. This is a fantastic time to sit down and let your eyes adjust. And you can watch as this community of bees and butterflies go from flower to flower, collecting pollen and nectar. It's honestly one of the most magical experiences you can witness, unless you have hay fever. 
then it's slightly miserable, but still worth it. <laughs> it's nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> and in the autumn, go find a tree. This is a fantastic time for, to look for ladybirds. If you're gentle, you can pick them up, hold them up to your face, and watch they open their wings and they fly away. What's the worst that can happen? Maybe they pee on you? It's just a bit of beetle juice. Don't say that three times. And if you want to take your bug appreciation to the next level, let me introduce you to my favorite group of insects, the dung beetles. Now, most people don't think we have dung beetles in the UK, but we do, and they are glorious, and they are so important. Without them, all of the animal dung would pile up, it would kill the grass, there'd be flies everywhere. But dung beetles eat the dung, they break it up, and they bury it underground. They're nature's cleanup service. But the reason that I love dung beetles so much is that despite spending their entire life digging through animal dung, they are some of the most beautiful creatures that I've ever seen with these fantastic metallic blue bodies. And if you look even closer, they have the most fabulous eyelashes that I, for one, <laughs> I'm a little envious of. And you can find these yourself. All you need to do is put on some gloves, go dig through some cow dung. <laughs> it's fun for all the family. <laughs> there is so much beauty in nature. If only we were to slow down and take the time to see it. And it's often in the most unexpected of places. And if you can learn to find enjoyment digging through animal dung for these beautiful blue dung beetles, then I, for one, think that's a great way to live. I'm probably a little biased. And if you're ever feeling alone, just remember that at all times, you are completely and entirely surrounded by bugs everywhere that you go. <laughs> There's around 1.4 billion insects for every one human being. You can't escape them, so embrace them. And if you can learn to take time to slow down and start to appreciate the little things, I'm not saying you need to start digging through cow dung. You can build up to that. But try to just appreciate them. Then your life will be richer and you will never be bored. Because time really does fly when you learn to love bugs. Thank you. <laughs>